Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 50, Siblings or Siblings Q&A. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely and talented co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi. And Sam's over there, too. So I didn't change the angle. But anyway, (laughs) so this is a, a tens episode where we're, we've reached the 10th of our series and we always traditionally do a questions and answer session when we get to this stage. And this week we brought in uh, our co-host from Insights Into Tomorrow, uh, who happens to be Madison's brother, Sam Whalen. Hi, Sam. How you doing? I'm doing good. So we're going to put you on the hot seat today. We're going to ask you a series of 20 questions. Yep. And uh, we're going to see where we go with it. All righty. This is our opportunity to get to know more of Sam. Shall we get into it? Why not? All right. I turn the questions over to you, my dear. All righty. So we were talking about our fifth year. 50th podcast and who we were going to interview and when um, you came up in the section of people who we haven't interviewed yet, uh, Daddy recommended me to look up questions like I normally do. So I got 20 questions here. I changed up a few of them. Um, Some are lighter than others. Some are a little more hard-hitting. We already went over these. Are you okay with these questions? Yeah. Yeah, they're fine. Okay, they're not too personal. No. Alrighty, cool. I'm. I, I'm. What's sorry. your social security <laughs> number? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just really nervous about this. Alrighty, so question one is a pretty light one. So, where would your dream holiday be? Uh, I like to go somewhere cold. Um, probably somewhere north. Like I'd like to see the northern lights. That's always kind of in like a dream. Um, mm. so wherever I can do that. I don't like flying though. So like somewhere in like northern Canada maybe. Sam's okay. native Eskimo is, is calling. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly not Florida. No, definitely Clearly not. Clearly not Florida. No. <laughs> okay. Well, the next one is uh, slightly more hard-hitting. What was it like spending weekends with your father? No, uh, they were fun. I remember them being mostly fun. Um, even if it was getting, you know, dragged to something I didn't want to do. Um, you know, but you have to do that in life. It, it's a good lesson. It builds character. Um but, you know, overall, I just remember them being fun. You know, because during the week, I'd have school and, you know, what responsibilities you have when you're a kid like that. But then the weekends, you know, I would come here, or, you know, where we used to live together. And it was, you know, just something fun to do, usually. So. Alrighty. Okay. Sort of what we do now, even though sometimes you drag me to places as well, and I don't particularly like to go yeah, them. So. And we still drag you, too. So. <laughs> yeah. It's good to see we're continuing that family tradition. <laughs> okay, so the next one <clears throat> is sort of in the middle. Um, if you could change any part of your life, what would it be and why? Uh, I'm not sure if this counts, but I'd like to change my weight eventually. You know, I've tried lots of times. Um, it's just a struggle, you know, that I dealt with my whole life. Um, but, you know, if I could snap my fingers and fix it overnight, it would always be... But it's not that easy. So that's assuming you can snap your fingers and not wipe half the population. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think I would. I think I'd take the chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair. Fair answer there. I think. I think. I mine was along the same lines. I thought it was if you could go to college again, like that same, too, same thing. Sure. Same thing. Same thing. You and Mob- I weather. thought you and Mobby were the one two at the. Look, I'm not being interviewed one. here. He is. Ask the next question. Okay, so <laughs> number four is a pretty lightheaded one. Um, if you could be any fictional, 
What? <laughs> Pretty light-headed one. Oh my god! I am. I do. <laughs> you know, on the podcast, I don't know. If, like good grammar. It's normal. fine, sweetie. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so number four is if you could be any fictional character, who would you be? I think I'd like to be the Flash, uh, Barry Allen specifically, because he's the most powerful Flash. Mm. Um, I don't know. I think Superman's a boring answer, and I think the Flash is cooler. <laughs> so I'd like to be the Flash. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can definitely see how Superman would be. Kind of uh, the more popular answer, but also the more boring because he's like has all these different powers, and the Flash just has one like specific power, but mm. it's still pretty cool. So, spe- why Barry Allen? What what was so specific about Barry Allen? Um, well, I mean, he's not like the most powerful Flash. That's probably like Wally, because Barry Allen was like the original Flash. Well, I guess Jay Garrick was from like the fifties, but like you had Jay Garrick. Barry Allen and Wally West. And Wally West is, like, the most powerful. Like, he's done the most impressive stuff. Like, he, like, outran the universe one time. But I think Barry Allen is just kind of like, you know, he's, like, the original in a way. You know, he's the classic. And, um, excuse me, <laughs> sponsored by Diet Coke. Um, <laughs> he came back to life at one point, so that was pretty cool. Um, and then when his when he came back in, like, the 80s, it was a pretty big reveal. So I always thought that was cool. Okay, cool. Alrighty, makes sense. Uh, number five is a little hard-hitting... How did your life change when you stopped visiting us on the weekends? Um, I had a lot more... Well, I had the weekends to do other things. Um, so it helped me get closer with my mom um, and closer with my friends, too. Um, I was able to, you know, do things with them more and hang out with them more. Um, and it helped me just get kind of mature more in general. I think I'll probably touch on this more later. But when I stopped visiting, I was I was really angry, you know, because I was when you're younger, you're generally angry. I'm still pretty angry, but you know, not not about that specifically. Um, but I think it kind of helped me. It helped me put things in perspective, eventually. Okay. Number six is, what do you think would have happened if you were still visiting us on weekends? Um, I probably wouldn't be as relatively happy as I am now. I think I felt like I was really trapped um, visiting on weekends. So I think taking the break that I did and now getting rekindling relationship with you guys, I think it it allows me to you know get that foot in and kind of do things in a, a better, more healthy way instead of feeling like I'm forced to be here. So I think I would have really felt more trapped, you know, if I was still doing that. Okay, that makes sense. Number seven is what other languages can you speak <laughs> if you can speak any other languages? Um. I learned. I took Latin for three years in high school. Uh, that comes up sometimes, but not really. I use it as like a party trick sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I don't really. I didn't really retain most of it. Latin as a party trick. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a college course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's great. That and magic. People love it. <laughs> you mix the magic with the Latin, mm-hmm. and you get Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no other languages there, huh? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So number eight is going to determine whether you're like me or you're like. Our dad and my mom. <laughs> All right. Okay. Do you love or hate roller coasters? I don't like them at all. I can't stand them. <laughs> okay, you'd like dad. I don't want to willingly put my body through that. I don't see the point. <laughs> Just you, sweetie. You're the only <laughs> roller coaster fan. Uh, I mean, Although I... we did go on... Uh, Barnyard Barn Barn. Barnstormer. <laughs> yeah, whatever it was called. Barnyard uh, Barn. <laughs> we, yeah, we did Barnstormer. Oh, God, we did it, what, like three times that one time we were down in Disney. Yeah, but that was like a... That wasn't like a real roller coaster. No, it wasn't. Yeah. I it mean, wasn't. my mom was able to go on it, so mm-hmm. we know that's not a real roller coaster. No. Have you ever gone go on a real on roller coaster? No. No, mm. I did that. That was about it. <laughs> I did the Sea Serpent down in Wildwood. Mm. That was a real one. Didn't like that one either. I so. I remember doing um, Rock and Roller Coaster one time when we were in Disney quite recently, and my legs felt like jelly afterwards because that was the only Disney ride where you went upside down. Trust me, I was kind of reluctant to go on it mm. at first, but apparently I was able to go on that before I was able to go on the Tower of Terror. Yeah, when uh, when we because we went to Six Flags a lot on like a high school trip, which is Six Flags is just all roller coasters. So I would just hold everybody's bags. Like, yeah, uh, I was like, I'll hold your bags if you want to go because I don't want to do any of this. Yeah, right. like the one time when I went to my um summer camp, we were at um, I think it was Ocean City, and we went on rides, and there was the one alien thing where you get strapped in and you just spin around, and I'm like, uh, no, I'm good. I'll just hold your stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was really reluctant to go on that. Okay, well, some things haven't changed. (laughs) Yeah. Alrighty, so 
Number nine is a pretty fun question. What is the weirdest weekend that you had with us? Um, I don't know why this one sticks out in my mind, but we went to this island one time. I can't remember if you were born or not. Um, we went to this island of Mickey's, of like Mickey statues. Pens Landing, we did. Yeah, that was over Pens Landing. It's not an island, by the way. I know, but like <laughs> we did take a boat to get to that's it. That's why I thought it was an island, because like you know, because I was younger, so like I created like this mythology of it in my head. <laughs> like we were going like the island of like misfit Mickey's or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I think looking back on that's actually kind of cool, because it was a bunch of Mickey. I think the statues were all the same, right? They were the just statues painted. were all the same, and then different people painted the statues yeah. in their own styles. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought it was super weird, um, but really, you know, clever in hindsight. They were the Mickey Inspiration statues, and they were uh, done by famous people. And the statues themselves were then auctioned off for charity. Mm. And actually, we have a whole bunch of little ones that are downstairs in the curio cabinet now from that series. Oh, yeah. I know that. Yeah. So that was over at Penn's Landing where the um, Seaport Museum is, where they've got the ship and stuff like that. And we've done that a couple of times. So, but yeah, that island, Penn's Landing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving right along. Alrighty, number <clears throat> ten, halfway through. Are you like us and collect anything? Uh, I'm not. I'm sure. Well, I guess. I mean, I get records. I have a lot of records. Um, I don't know if I'd call it a collection. Like, I don't actively seek out certain records. Okay. Um, but if I see ones I like, I'll get them. And I like to listen to them. And I just like to have that. You know, my setup. With like the record player and the tape player and all that stuff, I'm really proud of that setup that I've made. Um, so Very I'm, retro of you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the only thing I'm missing is like an eight track, but they're really expensive. So. <clears throat> I think when you don't make them anymore, so I guess you got to find yeah. one at like a. Which is why they're so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Alrighty, moving on to number eleven. What would be your average weekend when you were visiting us? No, well, I kind of touched on this before. It was kind of a dice roll. Um, I either we'd do like grocery shopping, which I never wanted to do, or it was just playing video games all weekend. Nobody does, so well, you're no. not you're not alone. Well, in I that. mean, I know the whole video game thing because yeah. sometimes when I would come down, I would see you guys playing mm -hmm. video games. Yeah, so it'd be that, or we'd we'd go on a road trip or something like that to somewhere. Or we'd go do something he didn't want to do. Well, then... yeah, road trip somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, some of those are fun. Like conventions are always fun. Um, but yeah, you know. So okay, alrighty. Number 12, if you could meet anyone, living or dead, who would it be? I was asked this question recently, and I really don't have an answer. I'd probably like to meet my mom Whalen again, just because I was so young when she passed. It would be nice to be able to talk to her and actually get to know her, you know, now that I'm older. Um, or, I don't, like, I don't want to meet anyone from history, because they're probably not nice or good people. Like, I, don't, I can't think of anyone from history that would be, like... I feel like if you'd actually meet them, they'd be, like, terrible people, you know? Right. Like, they'd shatter that image. Yeah, around. yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, like, Dave Grohl. He's still alive, though. So. <laughs> Explain who Dave Grohl is. Oh, he's the lead singer of the Foo Fighters. They're my favorite band. Um, he used to be the drummer for Nirvana. Um, he just seems like a really nice guy. And he's got his... He's done a lot for music, especially rock. And a lot of young musicians, which is pretty cool. And I just really admire and respect him. And he's, like, one of the only people that something horrible hasn't come out about. So, <laughs> Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, you could meet anyone living or dead. Yeah. So, um, I guess he still counts. All right, number 13. What was your favorite cartoon growing up? I had a lot of them. I liked a lot of stuff on Cartoon Network. Like, I liked um, Foster Home for Imaginary Friends and Dexter's Laboratory and, um, like, all the ones that went on, like, Classic Cartoon Network. Um, See, I remember Ben 10. Oh, yeah, that was another one. I watched like three different versions of that because yeah. they just kept making it. I think they're still making it. Yeah, um, they, Samurai they Jack. Are. They brought that back. That was awesome. Yeah. I watched it. I was so excited. I used to enjoy watching Samurai Jack with you. Did you watch the when they brought it back? <clears throat> I haven't seen a, the remake. Oh, it's of great. It, no. It's fantastic because it's like Samurai Jack, even more for adults than it was before. It's so, like nice. they deal with like, like PTSD and stuff. It's really oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, wow. it's awesome. Cool. All righty, moving on. So. Number 14 is, do you remember any Halloweens we had together? And if so, what do you remember about them? Uh, I think just the one because there's pictures of it. But when I dressed up like the, in that low-rent butcher costume. Yeah, the one with all the blood. That one, yeah. Which was just an apron with a $5 mask we got from <laughs> the Halloween That was the store. one where we got, that was when we uh, moved into the, the house we're mm -hmm. in now. Yeah, I think that's why I remember it because yeah. it was our first one here. You know the one that I remember with the two of you? You did... Um, <sighs> She was in, I think, a bunny costume, 
and you did or cat costume and you were Van Helsing. Oh really? Remember oh, when yeah. you wore the overcoat? We got the crossbow yeah. and the hat and everything. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't that was when we were still in the apartment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I forgot about that. I don't remember ever dressing up in a bunny costume. Then again, I was like less than three at the time, so. Yeah, we'll have to go back and find the pictures for that. Yeah. So, next question. Alrighty, number 15. What's the best gift you've ever received? Um, I don't know, when I got my Wii, I was pretty excited. Because, like, that was the year the Wii came out. And, like, it was the biggest thing ever. And it was, like, all I wanted. And I think my mom went to, like, four or five different places. And, like, I think she ended up buying one off eBay for, like, double the price. That first year that we came out, it was so hard to find. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I got that, I was so excited. And I played that, like, all the time. Um, you know, by myself or with my friends. Like, it was, I was just awesome. Um, so, yeah, that's probably... I'm, like, the Super Nintendo kid. I don't know if you've ever seen that video. Yeah, <laughs> The kid, yeah, like, yeah, freaks yeah. out when he gets a Nintendo. It was kind of like that. So yeah. that was fun. Nice. Alrighty, number 16. Would you say that our relationship has gotten better thanks to the podcast? Yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned this before as well. I think just in general, um, doing this and, and having a reason to, to swing by and to interact with everybody and to kind of get back into each other's lives, I think the podcast has been a great way to do that. And I think, you know, it's it's something that's casual, but it also lets us talk about regular issues, you know, which is kind of like a small talk. We don't have to get into something heavy all the time. Um, so, yeah, I think it's definitely definitely helped our relationships. I definitely think it has, too. Good. All righty, now, let's see if you're like Daddy or me and my mom. Number 17, are you a dog person or a cat person? I'm definitely a dog person, 100%. Um, I had a dog for a while. Oh, go ahead. For what it's worth, I'm a dog person too. I know. That's what <laughs> I just said. Forced to be a cat person. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, you're just forced um, to be a cat person. Yeah, I had a dog for a while. Uh, he recently passed away, so but we're looking at getting another one. But I still have two cats that refuse to die, um, <laughs> despite your best efforts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, we feed them and all, but um, they kind of act like dogs, which is weird. Like especially my one cat, like he like plays fetch. Like I'll throw a ball and I'll, like bring it back to me. Um, so yeah, you know, even keeping my, the dream alive. Yeah, man. even my cats kind of <laughs> like like dogs, you know. So, but yeah, definitely dogs. I think dogs are way better. I don't know how <clears throat> anyone could like cats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> oh, just for the record, our one cat was originally supposed to be yours, you know. Yeah, I know. Okay, <laughs> just just for the record, now I don't I'm like st- cats. <laughs> now I'm stuck with a spaz of a cat. Um, you mean Pac-Man? <sighs> Pac-Man, yeah, Leota. Yeah. Funny thing is, I had pl- I had plastic bags in my room, and like when I woke up, I'm like, "Wait, is that rain?" Then I turn around and I see her just chewing on the bag. Or neurotic know? cats who chew on <laughs> plastic bags. Yeah, Dorothy actually came in my room at one point and ate the bag <laughs> and ate a piece of the bag. And then they puke them up, and it's like wrapped like <laughs> yeah, sausages. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a- great. It's you know all the things you love about cats. Dogs yeah. don't do that. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Alrighty, number eighteen. Getting to the last ones. What is your fondest childhood memory? Yeah, I saw this one, and it's another question that I get asked, you know, in, like, regular surveys and stuff, and I have no idea. I don't have an answer. Um, I've had a lot of good childhood memories. I mentioned the Wii. That's probably higher up than it should be because it's, like, a material object, but... Um, <laughs> um, Christmas and Chris and Dan's was always really fun, um, especially when I was younger, and, like, you know, having Santa show up. I, I don't know. And, like, that party, those parties I used to have... That all felt really wholesome and genuine to me. Um, and Christmas in general, too. Like, even at my house, we would have a Christmas party that always was really nice. And when you're younger, you kind of just get swept up in the moment. And I think that's what it was. So those memories were always really nice. The Christmas Eve hunt for the mon- monstrous Christmas tree at your yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> We did that again this year, and then we found one pretty easily. We just went to Home Depot. But this was the first year where I was like... It's kind of a dumb tradition because <laughs> we're that family that shows up on Christmas Eve looking for a tree, which is why we can uh, find one. Well, and the problem is when you need a 24-foot tree, you can't yeah. buy it early because well, it's too expensive. We've downsized now. Oh, okay. we, don't, we don't keep it in the in You don't the wedge area. it between <laughs> the, know. the vaulted ceiling anymore. <laughs> There's still scrapes on that ceiling from that tree. But, yeah, but probably Christmas. Christmas, different Christmas memories. Mm. Okay, cool. All righty, number 19. Would you be a superhero or a super bill? Uh, <laughs> sorry. Would you be a superhero or a supervillain? And what would your superpower be or superpowers? 
I think about this more often than I probably should because there's more pressing matters in the world. I feel like I would start off as a superhero, but then it's like Harvey Dent, like I would become the villain just because I would probably get bored. Um, especially if I had like godlike powers, like Sounds Superman. Sounds like how I play Red Dead too. I start out being good, and then I just go around <laughs> and start blowing people's heads off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually could see that. It would be a really nice story. Yeah, and I mentioned the Flash earlier. I think if I could have a superpower, it wouldn't be super speed because the Flash doesn't just have that. He has the speed force. Which is cool. It's like the force from Star Wars. It lets him do like anything he wants. Mm. Like he can like travel through time and like phase through walls and make tornadoes with his hands. So like that, you know. Or a Green Lantern ring. That'd be cool too. But I don't think I have strong enough will for that. The tornadoes with your hands thing I don't get. He could put out fires. That's about it. (laughs) 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 Okay. Moving right along. Yep. On to number 20, our final question for the podcast. What would you say about our relationship when we were younger? Um, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't... I think we kind of just were... We did our own thing. Um, you know, I wasn't, like, outright mean you, like, you know, kicking you down the steps or anything. But, you know, I tried Good to... think we didn't have a lot of steps. <laughs> yeah. I tried to look out for you where I could. Um, but I think... I don't know. I feel like we, we just kind of had separate lives to a certain extent. Um, especially because I would only ever be here on the weekends. Um, so, you know, I was kind of dropping in and out. Um, but, you know, I think it was... Pretty average, all things considered. Alrighty. Okay. Did you uh, did you have any questions for Madison? Uh, sure. You can do the superhero and power one. Um. Hmm. Let's see. Um, I actually do have a version of myself that I think. I don't know. I mean, she was kind of evil at the beginning and slowly got more good. Honestly, she could have like. Her powers basically consisted on whether she was evil or whether she was good. And to be honest, she's actually half and half. Like, half of her, like, her human self, she's a pretty kind person, the normal me. And her other half is her demon side. She was possessed by a demon when she was younger, so that's how she got her powers. Occasionally, the demon will come out if she ever gets angry. And um, whenever she's trying to fight people who are trying to either kill her, take her, or kill any of her friends, harm any of her friends, all that kind of stuff, her demon powers show, and occasionally she'll just bring out her demon self. Um, But in the beginning, when her demon self was with her, they never really got along, so they would come her demon self would come out more often. Eventually, they did get along. Um, I guess it's sort of like how... Bruce Banner and the Hulk kind of evened out in the end, so. Okay. That was a really detailed answer. That, that was, was really well thought out. Yeah, I was not <laughs> expecting all that. Yeah, mm. I have a whole, um. Do you have any issues of, like, comics I can read about this? It sounds like it's, you know, you've already written or something, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, I am in an app where you can basically, like, do that kind of stuff. Oh, really? That's interesting. All right, yeah. well, good answer. Uh, flesh out answer. <laughs> That's all I got. So I had some questions <clears throat> I wanted to ask you too that I think she might benefit from the answers on. Um, and these are softball questions, Alrighty, personality that's good. questions. Uh, and I didn't write them down, so I'm doing this off the top of my head here. So the first question I had is what type of music do you typically listen to? Like, what's your favorite kind of music? What are your favorite bands? You already mentioned Foo Fighters. Yeah. What else do, would you have in that category? Um, I think a lot of people say this, that you know, I listen to all kinds of music, but I really do try to diversify um, what I listen to, and I like to listen to new things. And I, I don't like to shut out genres of music, because I think the second you do that, you start to lose touch, mm-hmm. um, not just with other people, but just with music in general. And I like music a lot. Um, it's, it's pretty important to me. Um, but I mostly gravitate towards rock um, in general. Like, that's probably, if I had to pick a category, I'd probably pick that. Okay. So... Well, that's a good answer. What about let's apply that same question to movies and TV? What, what if you had a playlist of your top five movies and top five TV? What would the genres be? Not necessarily the you don't have to get specifics on the shows. Um, that's a tough one because I've really been trying to get in. I've gotten into movies a lot in like the past. Well, before I started going to college because I'm going to college for radio, television, and film, so I've been studying it too. Um. I like westerns, but I haven't seen that many of them. But the one I've seen, I like a lot. Okay. Um, especially like the Sergio Leone ones. I think I just think they're really great. Uh, Sci fi is pretty great because I love Star Wars. Um, not a big horror fan. I like I like to read about 
horror movies and how they're made because I think you can do a lot with horror movies in terms of like um, genre conventions and and storytelling. I just don't like to get scared. <laughs> okay. But um, I watched a movie the other day called The Lighthouse, which I guess is kind of like, it's kind of like a horror movie, but it doesn't rely on jump scares. It's more like psychological horror and like yeah, they're yeah. more the type that I'm into too. I don't like the cheap you know right. jump out and scare you type. Things. Yeah, it's more like disturbing imagery, stuff like that. And that movie was awesome. And like, for me, a good movie, the more you think about it, the better it gets. Or they could kind of just get stuck in your brain. Um, whereas a bad movie, the more you think about it, the worse it gets. Right. Um, so, you know, things like that. You know, like the latest Star Wars. Yeah. So let me ask you this. When you grow up, what do you want to be? It sounds like a silly question, but given your age now and and the fact that you're in college, I think it's kind of a, a profound you know, where are you going to be 10 years from now in your career? Well, I like to be a radio producer, uh, first and foremost. I like the idea of maybe not always being on the air, but working behind the scenes to create content for, you know, people that are better versed at, at being on camera, being on mic. Just the idea of being a producer in general, I really like, um, you know, creating situations where, you know, either whether it be comedy or, or discussion can happen, Things like that I really enjoy doing, and I just like radio in general, um, even if it has the connotation of being a dying industry. Um, I, I just love it. I love doing radio. Um, I do a radio shift every week, and I love doing that. So anything in that area, I'd really love ending up doing if I can. Okay, cool. Um, I think that was all that I had as far as questions. Did you have any other follow-up questions, Madison? Not that I really know of. I think I kind of put all the questions I wanted to really ask down. Okay. Well, it was a pretty late session here. I, I think we're pretty much done with what we were going to do. Anything else you wanted to talk about uh, the podcast? We're about less than a half hour in at this point. Okay. Um, was there anything else you wanted to talk about? Well, would... um. Um, I guess the way that how you ask the questions to Sam and how it would better benefit me, maybe you could ask a few more questions to me to help ben better benefit him. Okay. So <clears throat> Sam probably hasn't, you know, had an opportunity to really keep up on what you've been doing lately and stuff like that. So why don't you tell Sam a little bit about what some of your interests are, some of your talents, you know, some of the stuff that we've talked about maybe even on the podcast. Oh. Alrighty, so I like drawing. That's definitely something that is a big thing for me. I always like to draw in my free time, and I also generally have a huge imagination. You, if you remember from our childhood, I probably had a pretty big imagination too that has not went off at all. Um, and mainly how I was able to come up with um, the backstory for my superhero slash villain was by, by with my imagination. I like to create characters with different backstories. Um, I've definitely done it a lot more now since I have the app that can help me create whatever character I wanted. Um, and I've um, also been um, drawing the characters now. And um, although I don't do... I used to do comics on um, Spongebob just because I read a Spongebob comic once and I decided to make it a new whole thing. I haven't done that in a while, but I do love to um, draw, and most of my friends also draw as well, so that's a whole other okay. thing. Good answer. So, <clears throat> aside from my suggesting that you interview Sam, what was the driving force in having him on the podcast today and... Uh, what was the reasoning behind some of the, the more personal questions that you had asked? Well, the reason for it was mainly to hopefully get closer to you since ever since we started seeing you more often, we never really had the closest relationship. Um, me and Mommy would just sit back while you two talked about, you know, latest Star Wars news, all that kind of stuff. And this podcast was intentionally supposed to be Hopefully getting to know you better, getting to hopefully have a closer bond with you since we are technically brothers and sisters, so... You're not technically and brothers we are. and sisters, okay. you are. I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> I'm not good with serious talk, okay? <clears throat> okay, then we'll stop being so serious. <laughs> How do you respond to that, Sam? 
Um, I think it's good you decided to take the initiative, and I think, and this was a good way to do it. Um, <clears throat> you know, instead of just sitting back and and having the issue, it's good that you found a way to to broach the subject. So, so Sam, let me ask this: uh, you know, in understanding what Madison's motivations were here, and the fact that she was hoping to try to rekindle what you know that relationship that you guys had before, and the fact that you guys are both several years older now, what do you what do you think the future looks like? You know, as far as being a part of Maddie's life, um, I think things like this do help a lot, and I'll definitely do more uh, podcasts of this type. Um, you know, but as you get older, if you need help, especially entering high school and college, <laughs> things like that, I can give you a little bit more practical or real world advice than most people might just because I've, I've been through it and I'm currently going through it and a lot of what I was told turned out not to be true or accurate um, so I think it helps to have someone you know from that background to give advice so kind of the uh, the big brother role that, that I think you were kind of looking for Maddie <clears throat> um, and I'll tell you I, I wish I could I could offer some insights into it but I was the youngest of, of four and uh, my three brothers didn't particularly care too much about me, so I didn't have much of a relationship with them. Um, so I'm hoping that, that maybe the two of you can have a little bit, you know, closer relationship than I have with with my brothers. Yeah, and to be honest, I'm actually go. <coughs> I'm actually sort of taking on a similar role like you. Hopefully, will one day. Um, my I have younger friends around the. <coughs> I have younger friends around the neighborhood, and I've been through what they're going through. My the oldest friend that I have around the neighborhood is in was two years younger than I am, and when they were going through issues, I would always be there to help them. So I sort of felt as though I was sort of the big sister. So that's good. Uh, The only thing with that is, you know, it's it's good to be able to give personal personal advice from having lived through it. You just don't want to do it to the extent where you ignore you know the other things that might be going through that person's life Um, because not everybody obviously every situation is going to be different so you want to be able to pull from your personal experience but also combine it with whatever their circumstance may be yeah so sam on the subject of friends i did have a question for you the friends that you hang out with now are they friends that you've known coming up through high school or are they friends from college mostly no i i don't really have any college friends i have like <clears> two <throat> maybe that i but i don't even i don't really talk to anybody from college um you know unless we're in a class together all my friends my main my friend group of i have like three friends that we all hang out together they're i've known them since i was like a freshman and sophomore in high school oh, okay so, yeah and that's we all cool. we all so still live locally so 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 Decent, long-lasting bonds you yeah, have. Yeah. Nice. Tell us about college. What courses, what what are you majoring in in college now? You you said you want to work in radio. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I'm currently pursuing a major in radio, television, and film, RTF, and then a minor I just picked up in journalism, um, which the minor, because you have to take like 13 courses to fill it out because they force you to take more courses than you actually need um, for your major. Right. So they were going to make me do it anyway, but they suggested that I take the minor in journalism. I was already thinking about doing that, so I was like, okay, whatever. So starting on Tuesday when classes resume, um, I'll start taking like an intro uh, journalism course and then get that minor uh, by senior year. Um, so yeah, yeah, working on the... I have a couple more major courses... Um, mostly now it's just major courses and then the minors for journalism that I'm going to be working on. I think I did all my, um, um, general education courses except for one, which I have to take this year or it's an online course. And like, I think it's called human variation. I have no idea what it is, but it was either that or lab classes, which I really didn't want to do. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So your first year in college, your second year now, right? Mm-hmm. So your first year you were staying on campus. You're not too far from the college show. You decided to not stay on campus this semester. Mm-hmm. How's that working out for you? What was your reasoning behind that, and was it a good choice? Um, I absolutely think I'm definitely for the better for living at home. Uh, I mean, it's cheaper, which you know is always important, especially when dealing with college. Sure, I think it saved me like ten grand a year or something like that. Wow, that's huge. Yeah. Well, Rowan, especially because of, I go to Rowan University they put a lot of precedence on living there because they're like currently demolishing parking lots for communities and stuff like that. So they really want you to live there, which means they can charge you anything they want. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't, I tried living there my first year because I wanted to get that college experience. Um, 
but I'm just not the, that social of a person. And like I said before, all my major friends are from high school. So right. I would go home on the weekends anyway to hang out with them. So at that point, I was it was just me sleeping there so I could get to class earlier. <laughs> and, and for the amount that I was paying, um, and having, at the time, I didn't have my license, so I needed to, a ride to and from campus every weekend. It just didn't make any sense. Um, so choosing to commute this year also gave me the motivation to get my license and to get a car um, and just to be more independent and to, you know, kind of mature and be more of an adult with the situation. So, yeah, so it sounds like it's been beneficial for you. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not for everybody. I, I yeah. totally agree. So I, the reason I mentioned this is for a lot of the reasons why Sam mentioned that staying on campus wasn't a benefit to him for, you know, social reasons and stuff like that. Um, things to take under consideration, you know, when you go to college, sweetheart. Hmm. So, okay. Any other questions? Um, not that I can think of. All right. Sam, did you have anything? No, I think I'm good. All right. I think that was all that I had. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Sam. I think it was a definitely a good talk, and I, I could certainly see us doing things like this again in the future. Uh, so I think that is it for today. Um, just a reminder, uh, you can reach out to us via email at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us uh, video and audio podcasts on our website at www.insightsintothings.com, along with show notes and transcripts of the show. Uh, you can get our video directly at youtube.com slash insights into things. You can get our audio at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can hit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast or on Twitter. We are at insights underscore things. And I think that's it. Thanks so much for your time, folks. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.